Nitu, you can start now. It's already 2.45. Hello, Manish. Hello everyone, uh, this is Priyanka Shinde. Uh, I hope you all can hear me. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, uh, yes. Yes. So, can I start? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I am welcoming all, all of you on the behalf of Synergetic Consulting. And uh, today, our, uh, today is our webinar is on data and uh, data center modernization with uh, cloud adoption framework. So basically, we have took this initiative and we have started a webinar series, uh, which is called as uh, Cloud Thursday. And uh, uh, we will start with uh, some introduction. So basically about Synergetics Consulting. So uh, we are a data modernization company focusing on transforming the uh, data centers on uh, of our customers to modern hybrid or a uh, public cloud based data center with elasticity, flexibility and scalable uh, capacity. So basically we are focusing on four main aspects, uh, which is our planning, assessment and discovery, infrastructure solution, deployment and workload migration then application and innovation and migration and last but not the least data and mm -hmm. AI solution. So basically we are uh, in this uh, field for more than 25 years. So we are having an experience uh, about more than five years. So now moving towards just give me a uh, second. Actually there is a network issue. I'll just share my screen once again. Priyanka, you are not audible. Uh, sorry. So uh, as I told you, we have uh, already taken initiative about this uh, Cloud Thursday webinar series. Under this series, you can see our calendar. We are going to host six webinars. So today is our first webinar. And uh, if you want to uh, register for our coming uh, webinars, you can visit our Synergetics Consulting website or just you can visit our social media handles. And uh, from there, you can attend, the, uh, you can register for this webinar series. Also for the recordings, you can visit our YouTube channel. Uh, on that, you will get the, uh, get the recordings of our previous uh, webinars. So moving forward to the today's webinar, so uh, all of you know the topic is data center modernization with CFA. 
so basically uh, for the agenda uh, for the today's webinar is uh, digital transformation challenges faced by the infrastructure teams in adopting the transformation then uh, planning the cloud journey uh, microsoft uh, adoption uh, framework and implementing the governance in the cloud uh, cloud era so uh, moving forward to the webinar speaker so today's uh, speaker for the webinar is mr anand prabhu he is a manager customer customer success and he is work, he has more than 20 plus years of experience in this industry and four plus years of experience in azure so, uh, solution architect uh, as a azure solution architect so basically uh, he is the best person to guide you about the uh, about the every bit of uh, cloud uh, data center uh, modernization and uh, before we move forward to the webinar i would like to tell you about uh, uh, about uh, some feedback uh, formalities uh, once you uh, once the webinar is over you can uh, we will send you an uh, uh, feedback form uh, we will send you a link through our email so just uh, fill that feedback form and uh, once we have received your feedback we will send you a uh, certificate a webinar participation certificate now uh, i would like to anand sir to take over from this uh, here yeah yeah thanks priyanka just share my screen and priyanka, if anyone can let me know whether my screen is visible yeah yes sir your screen is visible okay so as uh, priyanka told and thank you priyanka for the introduction and as uh, <laughs> told earlier by priyanka this is the agenda where we will speak more in terms of the digital transformation and its impact on the uh, in it infrastructures then uh, the digital transformation as a journey has happened uh, mostly due to cloud so what are the challenges that are faced by uh, uh, teams ac uh, across uh, various it teams across you know the or, uh, different organization uh, when they are implementing or you know are going through the transformation process we'll think of you know whether this will have been better there would have been a scenario where you know if there was a certain planning and an option scenario well defined to understanding can this be a, a cloud journey be planned so let understanding the planning of the cloud journey and finally uh, there is a framework which microsoft proposes the microsoft cloud adoption framework so how how does this changes the way uh, we have our cloud journey or we adopt our cloud journey and finally you know once you have begun on the journey governance and what uh, we'll speak more in terms of governance and its journey because that's the thing you will always be with all the it teams will be part of this journey so what how is the journey ahead so this is the agenda for today's uh, session so uh, let me first tell you and update you uh, you know by now everyone uh, every slide that comes starts with this slide of digital transformation so I just wanted to put certain facts and figures you know how big the wave is and what are we trying to achieve uh, you know what are we uh, into ideally so we'll see that organizations will be spending almost 530 billion dollars on cloud and you know uh, cloud services and cloud enabling it so this is the kind of investment across the board that will happen <clears throat> so cloud environment will be you know uh, the various places where 20% at the edge and over 90% multi cloud so this is how the uh, cloud will be adopted by various organization uh, enterprise would like to be agile uh, the applications will get rearchitected there will be uh, you know huge applications that will get rehost or replatform and then the majority of this application will have an overhaul and that will uh, contribute to almost 95% of the new uh, applications using the microservices moving towards containers uh, moving towards serverless computing and all this stuff so that's huge uh, in terms of in you know, the enterprise apps which will be onboarded into these organizations and 60% of all enterprises will have 
articulated a well defined digital platform strategy or you know most of them would have been in the implementation process so that's still 2021 so this is how the how big the wave of digital transformation is now though now that we are aware thing that and it is happening all across the industry or all across all enterprises what is actually happening so what they are trying uh, any application that is trying to do is they are trying to engage their customer and how does that happen of engaging the customer is through you know transforming the products so there will be productivity tools that will happen now uh, uh, once this tools that are onboarded on the cloud or you know the it infrastructure is being uh, provisioned on cloud to run this or provide compute to this product there is a huge challenge in terms of optimization so the your operations will get more optimized the more optimization that happens you empower your employees and that is how you know it uh, the digital transformation as a journey is affecting and impacting everyone so how big is the evolution this are certain figures the figures are a little old but you know this is how it has the evolution has happened in the year uh, 07 there were hardly anything you know most of the servers were physical compute was physical and that's where the journey has started it's not almost now 20 uh, 10 or years of a cloud journey which has begun but if you really see in the last 4 years where the adoption actually has begun has just started and we will see that all the organizations now are talking in terms of you know high availability resil uh, in a, a, uh, peop, uh, organization coming out with different business continuity plans uh, faster compute higher compute higher compute utilization or higher storage utilization so cloud is addressing all this uh, needs with a uh, very fast and uh, and uh, it is enabling uh, it to be more agile then that's how you know uh, the adoption is uh, that has happened in the last 5 years is like amazing you know that's what how the cloud is evolving in the current scenario and it will uh, as i said it will move towards a dollar 530 billion industry by another a year or so so what is the, now that we have heard the uh, you know about the evolution that is happening what is actually happening so let's understand the impact first so till today we had workloads we were having application which were running on silos and everyone was trying to you know manage manage these applications in silos suddenly uh, these are being uh put put and hosted onto cloud how does cloud looks like you know for uh, the people who have put in uh, resources on cloud for them it is simple is there is a compute there is a storage there is a network and this uh, applications are you know deployed into these three resources now uh, that's when when we spoke about cloud then then comes you know the platforms and you know, how the platforms earlier there were identity application data these are various platforms uh, which the it teams were managing now it's time you know where we have got uh, getting uh, transform into you know managing siloed architectures or leverage infrastructure or service oriented whether it is iis saas or pas so this services are being you know earlier it was uh, though we were saying that it was we were managing platforms now we will say either we are using saas application or pas and applications or we are using infrastructure as a service so this is what is happening to the service uh, industry and finally in terms of you know the applications what are there happening to the application is uh, application that were built on lego c platforms have started getting into you know innovation or modernization kind of scenario where they are getting rehosted they are getting replatformed uh, they are most of these are rewritten there are tweaks happening uh, certain applications are up to the scale are trying to uh, test the cloud scalability you know the new functionality in terms of scale and then 
more in terms of innovation where you know these applications are being monitored continuously in terms of what is happening what area of application is access the more so uh, what kind of computers happening can i identify a train so that i can save cost so all that is happening and you know the skill set has getting changed the evolution which has impacted uh, for people like and the platforms and the applications there is a huge impact there and to understand the impact so let's first understand what challenges uh, this uh, digital transformation is bringing on the board at the enterprises so this is a small set of skill set that is changing you know earlier we had a business manager suddenly uh, the job profile as asking in the new era or the cloud era is turning out to be an you know people are expecting that he should be an enterprise architect or someone who plans the journey there has to be a business architect and then there has to be a process engineer so these three roles are getting identified though they were early, earlier these roles were present but these were treated as a business manager today it has they, they are more vocal seeing a specific role the skill set and uh, uh, is getting uh, evolved the strategic skills are getting identified and people are designated as per the strategic skills now earlier there was a scenario where you know there was a U, uh, ui designer and there was a tester developer and support staff now these things are changing uh, you know ui designer is uh, get, getting out to be an ux engineer and then a developer or a solution architect or uh, and then there is a journey for the uh, uh, entire development team and say uh, the se uh, set of these people are being called as devops and devops engineers and those who were dbas are suddenly getting transformed into information architect so you you agree to me in terms of you know earlier where there were commoditized skills are now getting changed into strategic skills nowadays there is no no uh, demand in terms of dba but people are asking you know uh, have have you done any any course in data, uh, as a data scientist or something like that then you are more helpful the earlier the definition was still there people were still managing data but now the skills are defined as a strategic skills so that is what is happening on the shop floor skills are getting changed and all the it people and it staff the skills have to be realigned you know the it staff has to realign themselves to the skill so that is the impact that is happening on the uh, due to the cloud evaluation so what are the ch uh, challenges that are being faced so one was the skill set at the org level you know what is the challenge that is being faced who were you know uh, people who uh, organizations who adopted cloud what kind of journey and how did it begin so let's understand that first and then let's see you know what are those challenges and why th then we'll look into why there is a structure and a process required there first in terms of lack of visibility now we would all agree that you know no it engineer have gone said and uh, gone to the management and said that we needed a cloud everything every operation was running smooth or you know whatever extent they were always managing an infrastructure and they never wanted you know most of these uh, engineers they never wanted to be on the cloud but then there the need the business drove them towards uh, cloud and that's where the initial search was happened due to the digital marketing team or the uh, uh, the marketing uh, departments inside organization started creating websites and suddenly there were 10 15 websites per product in an organization each of them talking to a different vendor getting cloud benefits to their site and they say that they will say that i need a scale on a website the website uh, crashes I, i need a 24 by 7 website the website should not crash and then there has to be a cost attached to it also i won't be paying that much cash uh, you know cost to uh, uh, you know kind of uh, uh, websites so eventually you know these were the first moves to the cloud and if you really look into uh, take a, a, a scenario where you know whether it is a retail company or a pharma company every product has its own uh, dedicated site and every product has a different digital marketing team and each digital marketing team started with uh, talking to the uh, 
uh, vendors to get get on board, uh, get themselves on boarded on cloud, and then that's where the journey began. For IT people, it didn't, uh, you know, actually because it was not planned. They suddenly had that in their lap, saying that you know you'll have to manage this as a site. Now we have done the cloud. Uh, resources are already on the cloud. Whether it was AWS, whether it was Azure, it is al al already there, and now we'll have to manage it. Suddenly, you know, uh, there were lack of visibility to these people in terms of what are the kind of resources that have got provisioned on Azure. So there was a huge challenge first identifying the resources, wherein we say that there was a lack of visibility in terms of what uh, uh, workloads were provisioned outside the organization. And did it impact anything else beyond a visibility scenario? Yes. What it lacked was a control because digital marketing team said that my job got done. My site is up. My customers are coming in and my sites are getting, uh, you know, desired hits. But what happened to the resources that were, you know, provisioned? Did they actually had control? Did the IT team had proper governance, uh, governance or control on this? resources and the answer was no moreover as and when things started moving the it team understood that there is a cost overshoot that is happening because there is no thought process that is applied in terms of you know what resources why these resources have been used is there a, a, a more efficient way to use these resources that was not thought at all by the digital marketing, saying that this is not our job, it is an IT job. IT people will look into it, the IT org will look into it, the IT department will look into it. And suddenly there were, you know, uh, incurring cost on the uh, pro things that were pro provisioned sporadically as per the business request, suddenly got into a different uh, impact, which was cost un not under control. The worst part was, you know, everyone did their things as per the need and suddenly, you know, IT team were fighting in terms of compliance because most of these servers were not hardened. There was a operation uh, non-compliance on the operation side. There was non-compliance in uh, on the monitoring side. The application, this uh, uh, provisioned things were not coming into their SIEM uh, tools. The data logs were not getting generated. The worst part was, you know, <coughs> uh, the data. Data, where was it stored? Was it stored somewhere else? Was it stored in Southeast Asia or was the data stored in, you know, a region other than the country? So was, was there an impact there? No, none of these was defined and none of these was as planned. And suddenly there were non-compliance. Now look into an issue of non-compliance. Suddenly one of your uh, resources is non-compliant. The entire IT resources is taken for a ride, and the audit the audit gives a remark saying that you know the audit team, IT audit team gives a remark saying that this is non-compliance. And then all, all the major IT stakeholders are in a line answering compliance-related issues. Now that was uh, that was very bad a scene, but then it did happen. And then there was an extra effort that was put to uh, you know, uh, make sure that all the resources that were provisioned be under one umbrella, under IT uh, department, and, and uh, let's get this uh, deployment under compliance so that this is, you know, so that, you know, we there are no audit findings there. So this one, uh, and then finally, there were security risks because it was not thought of. Uh, how to start with they were not there were uh, no VAPT test done because it was outside the IT infrastructure the no processes were followed and sir, suddenly there were huge security risks now I'll give you an instance you know there were six seven uh, VMs that got generated by a different uh, marketing team or you know for different workloads and all of them having public IPs understand an importance of you know uh, public IP being ex IT, uh, being export exposed and any uh, uh, of, a, of an IT network right and if you look into if there are 25 30 sites there are 30 public IPs because public IP is very easy to create on cloud 
but who is thinking of the security vulnerability that we, uh, that an IT shop floor is getting into by you know having so many uh, endpoints that are open and unmonitored, and what will happen to the network in which these resources were placed? So there was a security challenge. Moreover, there was for further challenge where you know there were same IP ranges, IP addresses. And same kind of network getting created, so they could not be connected to the uh, on-premises network, and there was chaos. Now, this is these are where, these were the challenges. The only reason why this happened is because no one would have thought in terms of adopting cloud in an efficient manner. So that is what how the cloud got uh, the evolution and its challenges got onboarded onto an. Or into an organization or an enterprise. Now there were a few more things that you know that got into the uh, that added to the challenges, which are those is you know there were people who were telling that the cloud is very simple. Uh, that's how the cloud marketing people you know uh, uh, sales force from the cloud front they come up and say that moving cloud is very easy just. Run a machine in, you know, it runs a machine in five minutes. You can shift your workload. Everything should go on cloud. Your on-premise data center is useless. The cloud gives you scalability, agility, and all those, uh, you know, jargon started floating into the market. And then people started, to, yes, cloud being the next journey. Magazines are talking about clouds, blogs talking about cloud. The internet flooded in terms of cloud and its advantages. But really looking into how did that help? It didn't help the any of the IT organization. Everyone started the journey uh, with following this certain statements. Again, there was another statement mirroring an on-premise environment will help save money in the cloud. <laughs> Never ever it happens. A workload that is running 24 by 7 cannot be cheaper on cloud. And then there were, you know, uh, different ROIs that got into the shop floor. People started talking about the operational expense and the capital expense and the benefits of OPEX versus CAPEX. And uh, one bottom line statement saying that cloud is cheaper. All this added to the chaos. And there were huge uh, deployment by now, you know, on the cloud, there were almost 100, 400 servers on the of an organization onto cloud. Now they don't didn't knew how to manage all this. So when we heard about this and when the industry heard about this, OEM started thinking, uh, you know, telling that this journey had to be planned. If you look into AWS for that matter or Azure that matter, Azure begin began its journey 10 years back. AWS began its journey in almost 13 years back. When did the adoption uh, frameworks of this company started? You know, adoption theory or cloud adoption theory started coming. Only when they understood that, you know, after 10 years of rigorous deployment that happened onto cloud, the OEM started thinking, no, no, this is not the way it has to be. There has to be a planned journey because then only it helps. Otherwise, it won't help. The OEM partners got operationalized. They were efficient. But the organization which adopted the cloud, they were not efficient. They went into chaos of managing things. And that's where you know, OEM partners came up and each one started talking about their you know, planning your journey to the cloud. So let's see, you know, there is a journey which is why there has to be a journey. First understand that and then we'll look into furthermore what this journey and how the plan should be. So the, uh, the, when we said that we should uh, put resources on cloud, the, then there uh, was a requirement which uh, needed to be satisfied in terms of you know whether your resources, uh, uh, your designs are consistent, are they meeting regulatory compliance? What are you looking into? How are you looking into the security demands? How are you looking into governance of this? And for, furthermore. There was another scenario. Everyone was learning cloud on the on the run. So the way they implemented was that the right way to do. Is that the right thing to be provisioned? Is that the right way? 
do we really know what we are doing how do we know if this is the right thing and on this started coming in people were asking this to the uh support centers there were calls and is this the right way to do it and support center say we are here to tell you whether it is working properly or not we are not here to give you guidelines on designs so initial support tickets were flooded with more design related questions from the it staff i it staff and then because of this you know there was a need that you know the journey had to be planned and <clears throat> there was a need for cl cloud adoption uh, framework now what we, uh, why why is there a need and you know, plus and first understand because we'll have to choose a right cloud service provider and then we'll have to build you know the business justification we'll have to define the return on investment in terms of the workload going on to cloud uh, have we created created the boq or the uh, uh, you know financial model in terms of the cloud transformation we are planning and we are defining certain physical outcomes so you know this was the need wherein you know this was not able to <coughs> this was not getting addressed and this is where you know there was a need where uh, organization thought that there has to be some guideline somewhere or in you know, some bible somewhere which will tell us the right way to implement things and though that industry was going through certain things of data center exits this were the adoption motivation so <clears throat> people wanted to move on to cloud right with uh, with the kind of uh, requirement that were there on the shop floor where there were mergers and acquisition people wanted to reduce capital expenses people wanted to not make huge investment because this was the time when the there was a financial loom around the world uh they never wanted to invest huge the cloud gave them the opportunity saying that you know start as small as uh, you know as small as possible and then keep scaling as per your requirement without less hassle or without no hassle just keep increasing the plan of the skews that are being provisioned and keep increasing the workload and start scaling your applications so there were critical business events which were driving cloud adoption then there were migration motivation that were uh, driving cloud adoption and then there were different innovations that were driving motivations people were wanting to transform their products people uh, organization wanted to scale their products uh, they wanted to build new technical capabilities into their product because cloud helped them disrupt the market uh, by you know getting on uh, building a product as fast as possible that those were the key capabilities of the cloud which could handle load of whatever scale and then come down to you know whatever scale uh, come down to whatever minimum required in a short span of time which will give you cost advantages so this were uh, the reasons why there was a cloud adoption that is happening and that's need all these needed a proper framework to or a guideline to you know help organization build and uh, adopt a journey so microsoft came up with you know cloud adoption framework saying that you know this is how you should plan your journey so let's understand what this journey is all about that's the main crux of this particular uh, webinar today so let's first explain i'll just explain the process so this is a cloud adoption framework where you know every organization builds their cloud strategy then further once the strategy is been defined they have understood that the, the business justifications has happened expected uh, outcomes have been identified uh, there needs to be a plan to the strategy so that is all how you know you define your adoption plan to the business outcomes and your journey starts where you start getting ready and build your readiness programs uh, provision certain bare minimum baselines and define your readiness 
and once the readiness is there then start adopting by my either migrating your applications or workloads or innovating your workloads and adopting cloud and also during this you'll you'll all continuously ha have to think in terms of how how am i doing governance of what is getting provisioned or uh, can i set certain benchmarks can i implement best practices there so that i can govern it and then define the management and the operation side where we keep on continuously changing the and improving on the governance so that management and operations become more easy but for that whether the foundation and the baselines are proper so that we can manage this so this are the you know five uh, five uh, uh, disciplines and or you know five things that one has to follow as part of the process so that was strategy plan planning the readiness the adoption the governance and the management so i will discuss in detail of each of this and uh, tell you what are the benefits and how it is actually affecting and in uh, helping it staff to build their things here so as we said that you know uh, there had to be motivation so first and foremost every organization has to identify the, the motivations uh, for adopting cloud right so once you are clear in terms of motivations why you are uh, adopting cloud then you will have to train in terms of you know business business outcomes you know though we have depend the motivations what uh, what are the business out outcome of the adoption so that this is a strategic process of first identifying the motivation then defining the business outcomes so the caf gives you different how business states different business outcomes and it helps you build identify your stakeholders and executives to get uh, this business outcomes so there are different surveys that they define uh, then you identify your business justification where you develop a business case uh, validate the financial model look into the nitty gritties of each of the resources that get provided or each of the things that will uh, impact cost and whether that is supporting your motivation and the business outcome so there are various templates that are being provided as part of you know so that uh, an organization can build that cloud strategy and then once the three things are done wherein we have the motivation or the business outcomes or the and the business justification is done then identifying of the first project and the first right project to get on to cloud to understand how do, what does it take for all, for everyone inside an organization or an it staff to actually you know align towards the new uh, adoption of which is cloud so these are the strategic scenario you know as a strategy one has to build once this gets built you know you you can actually start planning but then what is the importance and what are the benefits of defining a strategy first is you know it helps in defining an efficient strategy it helps in uh, driving adoption efforts and those are uh, targeted uh, uh, towards a business outcome in a cross functional model so these are the benefits you get out of you know defining a proper cloud strategy process and then you can map your adoption strategy to specific cloud capabilities and business strategies to reach your desired state of transformation so this is how you build your strategy now you know the caf helps you build this and these are the benefits you can you know or uh, these are uh, this is the take away that you can have as part of defining a right uh, cloud strategy to start with so then comes the planning process so for uh, once you have defined that okay the strategy is in place saying that we'll have to adopt cloud uh, you have defined things then comes of you know what are we taking to the cloud now we got to know that the first workload is again uh, getting onto a cloud then let's plan you know what what uh, whether we have the right set of tools and everything for for that first you should have a knowledge of you know what inventory you have what digital state you are 
having currently and then you will have to rationalize that digital state on assumption that you know whether it is getting aligned to your motiv motivation and business outcomes so that's how you plan your uh, digital state now this digital state you will have to set up a vision for this digital state saying that this is my current digital state and there will be a scenario where this will be my digital state so there is a end vision in terms of you know uh, your journey so the starting point is strategy though the end uh, part is in terms of, uh, of you know what should be my final digital state what will it look like and that's where you know that uh, distance between these two points is what is the cloud journey all about so you have defined your digital state then we start understanding that organization whether there is an organizational alignment uh, in terms of ad adopting cloud is there a skill set defined you know is the organization aligned to whatever the plan is so you'll have to define an organization alignment plan you'll have to identify different roles then you'll have to uh, uh, once the roles are being identified one has to define in terms of the skills and the readiness plan in terms of you know for each role what what skills have to be adopted and are they uh, are the people who are being designated this particular role are they skilled properly uh, are there any readiness gaps so all this comes under the planning process and finally you have an cloud adoption plan <coughs> to manage change across the digital estate skills and organization so this planning exercise will help you build the entire scenario of you know from moving towards uh, from moving uh, from a current digital state to a rationalized digital state saying that okay this is how the journey has to be and you have a, now a plan to run from a point to another point saying that okay this is what we will be achieving and this is what the re requirement to achieve the uh, end digital state so when we do this what is the take away we get so by having a proper planning process right so it helps you document your it helps documenting your technology strategy it uh, helps prioritizing your task so that you know the efforts are aligned towards the adoption then we can define various metrics and still keep uh, looking at the scenario is whether we are still part of the strategy are we not deviating from the motivations and the outcomes already defined right so that is how the planning process and uh, this uh, tangible uh, this benefits you get out of this planning process now once you have planned you know that's where you know you start the uh, ready, uh, readiness scenario you know in terms of uh, how do i prepare the cloud so that you know i start putting the resources uh, rightly onto the uh, platform right so that's where you know uh, microsoft comes with uh, azure setup guide now this is where you know uh, where you are defining your readiness it is normally termed as landing zone so you create a landing zone as in you know you create your baselines proper define your proper baselines once you have defined your proper baseline that means you are ready to you know build uh, things on uh, or provision things into your platforms so that's where you know one uh, uh, reading th uh, going through the documents of guidance whether it is vp uh, you know for example look into a network scenario saying that i'll require a network and then i'll require a hybrid network now for hybrid network what are the different types of network options available in azure now looking into those options what is the right way to choose what kind of options you know and what suits into for my org right so uh, does vpn is the right way or if my org is 
too big uh, shall I opt for an express route or for users where you know they are our logging out from the outside uh, outside the organization are they been properly uh, their uh, security has been taken care of so in you know, a certificate based logins are available all this will have to be considered during when we are thinking of the network now same thing goes in terms thinking about a uh, compute so you know what kind of compute to be defined as part of your workload what are, what are the things uh, uh, as in you know whether we are uh, putting as infrastructure of a service or will we run this application as part of web app or we are we using vm scale sets or will uh, will this there will be a rehosting uh, and a modernized deployment we are planning for the workload and we'll say that we'll containerize the application gets containerized so these are the different compute options available now you create a landing zone and you create a, a doc, initial document telling that this is where my you know landing zone is and this is the plan for the landing zone now what else there is uh, your landing zone helps you create now first of all you know it helps you to identify if there are certain regulatory compliance whether it they are hipaa for you know for the pharma industry or cis benchmarks for and financial domain so different regulatory domains there are different compliances which are being provided so are this compliance enable as part of the cloud subscription are the right kind of uh, policies defined uh, for certain scenarios for example you create a try to create a security baseline and you say that you know there should not be any public ip now i can create a small policy now even though someone wants to go and create a public ip he won't be able to create because their compliance doesn't allow it your policy is being uh, written there now these are the things which will have to be there before we are provisioning the cloud and you know most of this are coming as best practices and the blueprints uh, which one can use to provision things and you start creating that readiness uh in you know, a start uh, creating that readiness for your you know uh, resource provisioning now this is what is called as landing zone now what exactly what benefit does it give to when you create a landing zone as you know you have a your efforts are reduced as in you know suppose you have 180 uh, machines and if the, there is no landing zone scenario or a policy being created every 180 machines will have a public ip the moment everything has a public ip writing or putting a security again uh, uh, to circumvent that uh, open end point will have a problem so if there was a planned scenario saying that you know there is a policy of not allowing a public ip to great created first place will reduce you most of the efforts of then managing the security to circumvent this or close this vulnerabilities so you have a faster service delivery uh, landing zone helps you saying that you know if you define a policy saying that all my vms that get created always have an availability set to add to so tomorrow if i have an applications which is running on one single server and suddenly as part of high availability where the uh, high availability states that you know minimum 2 plus uh, n uh, you know 2 plus n should be the scenario where n equal to 0 for high availability one will not get availability unless it is part of availability set the vm is part of availability set now if i can put in a uh, policy which tells that every vm that gets created should be part of availability set adding second machine as part of high availability becomes very easy then so this is how we are thinking in terms of scalability in terms of in terms of security as i spoke for the ip addresses now in terms of cost now every workload that goes or every resources that goes you know has to be tagged if it is tagged you understand certain things uh, in terms of you know saying that uh, these are the resources for these workloads which is being tagged so you just search do a, a graph query on the resources and you'll get to know the workload is using this many skews 
Now, as part of governance, if you are trying to put this into a resource group, it will write a small policy or you know a compliance scenario where you say that okay, uh, make sure all uh, resource group are protected, which means uh, delete. There uh, there cannot be you know delete resource group option available to everyone. Now, if you start writing these policies before we start provision, there will not be mishaps. That will happen end of the. Uh, you know, during the run where you know you have a workload uh, of resource group, and then there was a small spelling mistake, and someone goes and deletes the resource group, and the entire workload gets vanished from the cloud, and then blame the uh, OEM provider, saying that you know it is not proper. The mistake was someone deleted resource group, and the workload was inside that. So, what kind of governance policy did one have to you know? Make sure that such things didn't happen. So this is how you first create those initial policies in place, create those initial compliance adherence to initial compliance in place. Start your security centers, you know, start uh, logging your things. Uh, make sure that all the diagnostic logs are taken care of. Define your SIM tools. Uh, uh, define activities log populating your SIM tools, and you know, start. Now this is where. You know, we start off creating the landing zone. This is these are the steps we find, and these are the benefits. You know, if you put the landing right landing zone, your efforts are reduced. So these are the benefits you will get. Your agility increases. Uh, your operational rigor. Uh, there is an operational rigor uh, available for you. Moreover, with landing zones, if you are a pol are, uh, uh, you can also define your. Uh, cost policies where you say that you know you allocate budgets for your resources and all those stuff. Now that is the best practice for creating a landing zone. If you have this in place, I think you know you can start provisioning uh, workloads. I'll rest assured, you know, take this from me because the kind of uh, experience I have with uh, currently on Azure for five years, there are almost hardly 10-15 percent of organization. Who have adopted and created a landing zone? Other 80-85% have not created any zone at all, and they have not looked into the policies. Even today, even today they have workloads. There are hundreds and thousands of machines there, but there is no one monitoring the security center. There is no one looking into the Azure Advisor, and there are no uh, policy benchmarks or security benchmarks or the compliance benchmarks are in place, and things are running. By God grace, so you know now if you really put if, uh, want to you know streamline all this and put a proper governance model across this uh, scenario, look into the kind of efforts that one has to put to actually now start closing on the vulnerabilities or you know improving the security posture of the data center. It will it will be a daunting task. Now, had this been properly created, the landing zone would have been properly defined and created. You would have avoided uh, you know, a blunder in terms of uh, cloud. Uh, you know, uh, the resource that got provisioned and now currently it is unmanageable. So that's benefits of uh, creating a landing zone. Now look into you know. Now that we have understood that we have created a landing zone, now is the time to migrate the workloads. So there is a migration process which has been, uh, you know, adoption process which has been defined by Microsoft, where it says, migrate. How do you migrate your first work workloads? What are the tools you'll have to look into? What are the different things? What are the kind of uh, assessment you'll have to go through? To understand your workload, what are the different small uh, integration points, everything. So you'll have to understand, you know, wh what are those different migration scenarios, what are the best practices of uh, doing a migration from, you know, on-premise to cloud for a particular scenario, and what are the process improvement it has to go through, you know, if there is a process heavy activity, how are we taking it? And you'll have to also look into the migration scenario from an aspect of we just can't stop the business. Say, okay, we will uh, stop things and we'll move 
one day move from here to there and things will work. It is not going to work. So there has to be a thought, a uh, full uh, effort there. There has to be a plan in terms of migration. Now, CAF gives you such migration scenarios. It helps you, uh, you know. So let's look into what are the benefits. Uh, first, uh, look into what is the migration process first and then look into the benefits of it. So uh, there is, uh, this is how you normally migrate or any workload that gets migrated is, you know, there is an initial assessment done uh, where uh, evaluations of different assets, assets of an application or a workload is being planned. Then there is a migration scenario at places where, you know, it is a 24 by 7 workload. So how are we uh, replicating the data? You know, what is the availability time? What is the switch over plan? And then how do we optimize the performance of this application? And whether you are getting the right, uh, you know, uh, performance experience you had on premises and is your application secure and is it ma manageable? So this is an entire migration process. And this, uh, mind you, this is an iterative migration process. And you will have to, and this uh, runs for every workload that you, uh, you know, want to migrate from on premises to cloud. So this, there, there is an inti, inti, uh, incremental migration that will happen for each workload, and that's how we'll have to uh, define an approach. And now this approach gets defined as part of your planning process, saying that I will be having a workload. Uh, uh, migration approach or asset migration approach, but the best practices say that you should have an uh, workload migration approach if your assets are too huge to be migrated. So what are the uh, what is what are the benefits that are getting you know based out of you know someone listing the and uh, or listing the migration process it it provides guidance for migration was uh, telling you know what things you'll have to think of so it gives you an assessment it uh, helps you there are uh, various assessment uh, questionnaire which are available on uh, the site under CAF where you can look into those assessment and then understand you know what things are to be done so uh, and then for the, uh, once the assessment happens, then uh, uh, looking into your strategy saying that we went onto a cloud because it had to be resilient and all. So earlier it was not resilient. So have you and identified those resiliency uh, deployment with this current workload? So is that that all things will come up as part of your assessment? Then you will get to understand the different migration scenarios. Uh, what are the different best uh, best practices? What are the different tools uh, that will be used during your migrations and finally you you still every time you do a migration you'll keep improving the process so there is a guide to how do you improve certain process so these guides are available as part of your cloud adoption framework now comes the another uh, uh, subsection under adoption which is uh, innovation now innovations wherein you know you define thing that you know we have to, the workload has to be innovated. The applications have to be re-architected. Re uh, you know, there has to be a different uh, deployment strategy which has to be planned. So this process defines, you know, helps you define the business value, gets onto a consensus in terms of saying that this is the expected outcome. The then you'll have to define the uh, and look at, go through the innovation uh, guide. And you have to come up with a minimum viable product saying that, okay, when I want to innovate, this is the small start. And this is the baseline of the product saying that if this runs, then all the things can be built based on this. So we'll have to come up with MVP. So it helps build MVP for your application or your workload. Then it defines certain best practices in terms of you know, re-architecting your current application or you know, re-architecting your newer application. And then it defines also the engagement scenario in terms of feedbacks with the customer. So it helps uh, engage you with the customer, saying that this is the scenario where you, know, you build small, you keep measuring and you keep learning. Based on that, build again, and this is an iterative cycle. 
of innovation and this is how you uh, help develop digital inventions where you know you can democratize data uh, you can start engaging with your customers or the professionals involved in the usage of the application and you start emp empowering those adoption so you know you create a proper uh, migration block or a innovation block and define a cycle to build major and learn across different workload so this is where you know you start changing and adopting uh, or uh, an innovation process to your workloads and when you go through this process what benefits you get is it helps identifying business values that are being driven as defined as part of your uh, uh, cloud adoption strategy then it helps defining your deployment strategies defining uh, different innovation scenarios in different you know, sections of your application delivery models of your application and then it helps you uh, uh, you know get the best practices implemented so it, it has guides for best practices in terms of changing and innovating an applications and it tells you how to you keep improving so that you know uh, yeah, the turn around time is improved saying that you know how small the uh, your deployment block should be and how easily it has to be moved and deployed and regularly it has to be deployed so all that process innovation process is defined as part of the cloud adoption framework <clears throat> finally when we have said that we have uh, adopted that is the time when we think of uh, governance and as part of governance first and foremost is we'll have to uh, define a methodology for defining our governance we'll have to set a benchmark saying that you now though we follow a we, we are methodical methodical uh, there is a benchmark to saying that okay this is what we will be uh, looking in terms of governance and eventually basing a small uh, initial governance foundation saying that this is a minimal viable product this is minimum in terms of governance where i can start with now this mvp of governance actually get set as part of your landing zone and then you keep improving on your initial uh, governance foundations because this the governance is an iterative process the governance controls keep changing and they you know uh, you keep stringent governance across all your uh, provisioned skus on the cloud so why why are we uh, looking towards more governance as a scenario because it helps us building our cost management uh, you know uh, identifying our business risk um, uh, manage those risk uh, mitigate those risk uh, uh, applications become more you know or the data center becomes compliant or the it infrastructures become compliant there are policies being defined there are stringent policies that gets defined so the risk are covered and then finally a process that helps me monitor and helps me manage it better so these are the three things which we define as part from a corporate policy and as part of governance there are five disciplines one has to follow is uh, setting up a cost management process defining a security baseline defining a resource consistency uh, having a proper identity baseline and once you have all those eventually you will have an accelerated development and a faster and a agile adoption process so this is where you know when we are talking about in state this is how it has to happen then what import, uh, there uh, there is an importance of you know following five disciplines of cloud governance which are stated there so there is a guide for each of this how to do, how do you do cost management then there is a guide on defining your security baseline then there is a guide on terms of how can you have your resource resources uh, consistency how can you look into those uh, things uh, what kind of identity how are we looking into the identity or the security posture all those comes as part of the governance disciplines so when we are following a proper governing process which is defined in cap what are the benefits it helps defining governance methodology it helps arriving at benchmarks 
helps in building the baselines of identity security cost management and uh, resource consistent consistency once you have all this that then it increases the deployment accelerations through your blueprints which are there or you know your template driven deployment which one can use <clears throat> then it helps uh, there are guides uh, to set up initial foundation and there are guides in improving the foundations iteratively so these are the benefits of understanding the governance process as uh, defined as part of your cloud adoption framework and finally the uh, once things are uh, there is a governance in place then comes the managing scenario is how you are operating uh, you know uh, managing your uh, operation what is the approach so you establish a management baseline saying that these are the things these are the uh, tools i will be using this is how we will be migrate uh, and uh, managing the operations and understanding uh, first the process helps us in uh, defining the business commitments uh, uh, expanding the management baselines and how do we have an advanced operations and design, uh, design principles so that you can build your own sock for a bigger kind of uh, deployment so what is this process again in a, it looks into the criticality and the impact and the commitment that happens as part of the initial business alignment so your operation should run across this uh, no, three fundamentals which is criticality how and uh, how does each word workload in terms of uh, biz, uh, business criti uh, criticality it is identified what is the impact how do we define the impact and how do we mitigate those uh, defined commitments how do we track those how what are the different reports how does uh, different cost uh, reports on cost and performance how are they getting monitored and then it has a, a cloud operations disciplines defined where you have inventory visibility you have operational compliance you have protection and uh, your uh, bcp in place then your platform operations and workload operations so what are these disciplines help you build your operations and then there are tools it helps you understand certain tools of like security centers where it is helping or you are the sentinels of the world where all the uh, all your activities logs are getting uh, collected or you know you uh, you proper usage of log analytics how it can be used all these are defined as part of this of all guides are being defined as part of this managing process so <laughs> that's how i know what are the benefits of you know proper of following this managing processes it helps in defining resource visibility it's help building operational compliance uh building your protection on a business uh, business continuity practice uh the uh, guides you on the best practices of operations and continuously keep improving your workload operations through continuously monitoring either through application insights or you know and uh, strategy which is there inside of workload which is uh, writing events to your logs and you looking into those logs and you know managing the uh, workload operations so that's how in terms of uh, the different processes what we are looking into as part of cloud app application uh, cloud adoption framework where we th first saw about uh, <clears throat> the strategizing and then planning and moving towards adoption plus then uh, defining governance and then managing it that's where you know we, uh, we say that we have begin our governance journey and now uh, we have to identify how do we uh, you know keep improving on this governance journey so that we are establishing an in state so uh, getting into the in state uh, again an incremental approach and how we keep, keep continuously improving things for uh, this uh, governance scenario now look into you know this adoption changes as per the organization so there are different uh, governance journey planners which are available as part of caf uh, one for a smaller and a medium enterprise and one for a 
larger enterprise. So these are part of their your governance journey guidelines. This is sample <coughs> uh, governance architecture which is in place and trying to tell you in terms of how you can uh, build certain things. You know you, how you can have your as your blueprints. How and uh, there has there will be a accelerated deployment. So this gives you an entire governance architecture. Just have a look at it. I'll wait on the slide for a minute and then I will proceed. So this particular uh, architecture helps you define your uh, acceleration in terms of deployment. Now look into you know the there are subscription being shown uh, in the curly braces up there, where you know your subscription are having management groups, and you can start defining policy definition and role based access, and start having ARM templates. Start using ARM templates for your deployments. Then use Azure blueprints for faster deployments. Now these blueprints are based are based on resource manager or ARM. Then there is a policy engine, and then you have your uh, how do you get visibility into your resources is through Azure resource graph, and you can write queries to get and identify your resources. And you have a proper policy based control on all the uh, provision that is happening on the cloud. Now you, you can do this using either an Azure portal or CLI or any third party tool, and you can start provisioning things on Azure. So there are Azure blueprints is what you can look into. Then there is an Azure resource graph which you can look into. These two things will give you resource visibility at scale. And finally, in terms of governance, as we spoke about that, there has to be a minimal viable product. So there has to be a base identity baseline or a and a security base a baseline and a approach in terms of deployment acceleration. How are we deploying fa uh, workload faster? And this is how you start adoption. Uh, you know, you stop uh, start adopting a journey uh, in terms of you know your data update, corporate policies, and uh, security baseline or a resource consistency or a cost management. So you have your policies which can address all this risk. First, in terms of uh, data protection. The other, in terms of critical apps. And uh, and one in terms of cost, so you have all these policies in place, and this can be your minimal viable product for governance. This should be part of your landing zone. Once you have this, that's where you know you say that I, I am ready to go with my workload. And uh, once uh, this is done, you can then keep improving on this product. And to finally uh, 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 coming uh, to a uh, summary scenario where you know this is what is cloud adoption framework all about. Uh, as part of the uh, uh, cloud adoption framework, there are process where you can uh, you know start strategizing. Uh, you can uh, the post strategy you uh, in place. You can define your plan. You can. Have a readiness programs. When uh, the landing zone is created, you can uh, start adoption either through migration or innovation. And then, once the resources are being provisioned, that is where you start your governance and keep uh, having a proper operation in through your operations management and keep building on your operational maturity. So that's it. Uh, uh, from my side in terms of cloud adoption framework uh, as part of a data center modernization. If you have any questions. Right. 
I can take those. Hello. So any questions? Any questions? No, no questions, you can move on, Anand. Okay, uh, Neetu? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, you can share your screen, please. Uh, sure, sir. I'll take it ahead from you. Uh, yeah. So, everyone has this Neetu. So, uh, just to give a quick background, I'll just require five more minutes of your time. So, Priyanka, if you could just share your screen. Yeah. So there are uh, there are so uh, there are a couple of uh, firstly thank you Anand sir for your informative session. It was really uh, informative as always you do. Uh, also uh, so as moving forward so there are a couple of offers for like uh, business continuity and the cloud journey track. Couple of offers. So as everyone is aware about this uh, COVID nineteen situations. So uh, as part of this webinar, next step. So there will be an assessment survey that we will be sending out to you, sending out to you uh, that you we will have to fill it, uh, fill and send it back to us. So once that is done, we will be able to give you an executive brief, uh, which uh, th which will include a deep dive into the best practices of cloud adoption framework, and uh, also based on that, there will be a couple of advisory reports uh, for your. Uh, after the study, there will be an advisory report for cost optimization and security. Uh, so, Priyanka, if you could go to the next slide. Yeah. Uh, so, already as I mentioned, uh, based on this current uh, COVID-19 situation, so there will uh, for many of the businesses they they really need some uh, remote immediate remote working solution to uh, in a secure environment with simple deployment. So for that, uh, Synergetics have come up with uh, Synergetics and uh, Microsoft have come up with a couple of solutions, Azure Azure solutions in a box. So uh, that is one is a Windows Virtual Desktop in a box, security AAB in a box, DR in a box, and a basic continuity solutions in a box. So basically, these boxes uh, consist of one of the solutions as it's already uh, displayed on the screen. So there are also including uh, in this box, there will be, uh, uh, can you go to the next screen, uh, Priyanka? Hello, Priyanka. Oh, yeah. So uh, W as already mentioned, WVD in a box. So for, uh, there will be a couple of offers also that will be included in this uh, synergetics uh, services also will be included in this box. That, so if uh, I think it's pretty much uh, there in this uh, slide. So can we just move ahead? So these are for some of the uh, business continuity uh, planning that will be some immediate need that will be that the businesses would want to resolve. Uh, next, moving forward is for the cloud adoption journey. So like application migration uh, boxes, SAP B1 on Azure website, web app modernization, and MySQL in a box. So uh, this will be uh, these boxes will be provided with some uh, synergetics services like educate, advise, implementation, and management services that will be free. For uh, it actually, these free services are only for a limited offer. If you would like to avail it as soon as possible. So uh, Priyanka, next screen. Yeah. So these are the uh, services more into detail. Uh, so, if you would uh, like to uh, get get more uh, get more uh, information on any of these boxes, uh, you could get back to us uh, on from any of our social media links or directly uh, directly uh, to the email IDs provided. So, for thank you. So that's all I wanted to convey to you. So, Priyanka, if you could take over, and thank you everyone for joining. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thanks everyone. Thanks everyone for uh, joining today's webinar. Thanks, uh, Anand sir, for such a wonderful session. So we are going to mail uh, mail you the feedback form link, and also it includes the whatever uh, mentioned by the Nitu. So just uh, fill uh, fill the feedback form, and after that you will get the participation certificate. Thank you once again. Thank you everyone.